you don't see anything about my kids, that means I'm doing a f***ing terrific job. So, that means I'm winning. Thanks for reminding me. The videos, you can see one of the kids climbing up the car. The kids were playing by themselves in the park. Acacia was nowhere to be found. In a world that is as cruel as it is deceitful, tragedy is ignored in pursuit of a happy mind. Those who seek more venture beyond the veil, they venture into the vortex. I think that you can't deny that she is repeating the cycle. I feel bad for the girl that had managers instead of parents and was allowed to be preyed on by these older men. Peyton. He was similarly brutal. Yes, I was drunk. I had asked for help from people in my life over and over. Nobody was helping. On July 9th of 2023, a video was posted to the Eugene, Oregon subreddit that exposed influencer Acacia Kersey of what many have suspected for years, child neglect. Well, would you look at that? Acacia Brinley being a terrible person once again, leaving this baby next to the street. And this is Acacia coming out of the forest by herself where she went to go take pictures of herself. I'm sorry, but what mother takes their children to a park leaves them unattended to go walk in a forest that is yards away from where her children are. This is the same influencer who became the most hated through exploiting her children online on her social medias and has been accused for years of neglecting her disabled daughter. The same influencer who became Tumblr famous when she was a child and claimed she paid her family's bills from the age of 15. She comes from a famous family, with her brother being a Disney star, but for years her family has been hiding a dark secret. Her parents neglected and exploited her, and her father used the fame of his children as a way to prey on young girls. You cannot deny that he was a predator overall given everything that I witnessed, given what people have experienced. This is the story of how Acacia kept her family's dark secrets hidden, more than the public has ever imagined. And I pretty much at that point publicly had to be like, hey, I do not support this girl. I don't think that she's improved really. And obviously her protecting racists and groupers and predators is just part of her. And is now repeating the cycle, protecting and neglecting and exploiting her own children. And for her own children's safety, the public has to know the dark secrets of the Clark family. And I'm so grateful that today in this video, I'm able to speak with someone who has inside knowledge of Acacia's family. You got involved with the Clark family because you were dating Acacia's older brother, Peyton Clark. I'm Peyton Clark from I Didn't Do It, and you're watching Disney Channel. My name is Brittany Christine. I'm an LA-based influencer, micro-influencer. I don't know what you call it these days, but I create content on Instagram and TikTok, primarily TikTok. But my experience with the Clark family back in the day is really what threw me into the content creation space. It, there's so much chaos in their wake. They leave everyone worse than how they found them. It's just so tough to watch that continue to happen. Acacia cannot keep getting away with this and cannot keep profiting off of social media for the detriment of her own children. I'm very much of the opinion that she should not be platformed anymore. But at the same time, how do people know to not engage with her if awareness isn't being spread? But before we get into this video, today's video is sponsored by Copilot. Since I became a mom and started working from home, the motivation to take care of myself has been on the floor. I stopped working out or really even knowing how to, but our health is so important and it's incredibly helpful for there to be someone in our own lives who's there to look out for us, as well as give us some assistance to make sure we're on the right track. Because our physical health can have drastic effects 
effects on our mental health and our ability to show up and be there for others. And if you're an introvert like me, it can be incredibly intimidating to walk into a gym having absolutely no idea what you're doing. Home workouts can be almost even worse because getting motivated all on your own is an incredibly hard feat. Copilot is a solution to all of this. Copilot is an affordable one-on-one -on -one remote personal training service that provides personalized workouts tailored to your goals and available equipment. You get accountability and support from a real person with the flexibility to work out on your own schedule, all for the fraction of the cost of in-person training. I absolutely loved my trainer, Brooke. When I joined Copilot, I had a call with Brooke to discuss what my fitness goals were. And then Brooke tailored the perfect fitness routine to my weekly schedule. It kind of sounds like it's almost like hit or miss, but never really like, hey, this is what I found that works for me and this is what I've been able to maintain. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Brooke has been so kind and supportive while also holding me accountable and encouraging me to be stronger, which has been my general fitness goal. And the workouts are easy to follow with the fun animations of people moving on screen. Copilot is truly fitness made easy. I never have to think about what to do because it's all planned for me. You don't need any equipment to get started with Copilot. Your coach is trained to help you live a better life with as little or as much equipment as you have. Your coach will build a personalized plan for you whether you're at home, on the go, or at a gym. So click my Copilot link in the description to get a 14-day free trial with your own personal trainer. I'm so grateful for my experience with Copilot and Brooke who helped me with my fitness journey and I hope that Copilot will help you with your as well and thank you to copilot for sponsoring this video <gasps> you little sneak <laughs>if you watched my first video you know already that acacia gained a massive following as a child initially on the platform tumblr before expanding to the other platforms youtube and instagram but the thing is in that video we barely touched the surface of acacia's disturbing home life and her creepy family especially her father richard clark while you may know some of the allegations behind the story of richard clark there's so much more that you need to know about this disgusting man and what he did, but I need to put a massive trigger warning because it gets dark and it gets upsetting. Acacia's parents are Richard and Melissa Clark. They have four children. What was your view and impression of the Clark family? So my literal first impression, me and Peyton's first date was at his house. We were playing Super Smash Bros and Melissa walks in and without even introducing herself to me, she just saw that I was a new person in her house. She started talking about Acacia's new opportunities that she's getting. She had an audition, she had a new brand deal. And it's just Melissa like info dumping about all these incredible things about Acacia and Peyton's sitting there not even making eye contact with her. And he's like, that's great, mom. Acacia's amazing. It was very clear to me already that there was a favorite child and a child that was treated very differently. Richard Clark was a professional photographer who mainly took photos of young girls. Melissa worked at times with her husband on his photography business. In a report by the Daily Beast, Richard Clark's photography business documented only making $2,000 a month, not enough to support four children living in Los Angeles. Because Melissa was not working, like you stated, Rich was not making money anywhere near what you would need to live in a nice Ice apartment in Santa Clarita. So it also begs the question, how did this family afford their home in Los Angeles and their lifestyle? They were relying on their children financially. Acacia has claimed to be the breadwinner in her family, and I 100% witnessed her being the breadwinner in her family. That only changed when Peyton started getting money flowing in from Disney. Acacia had that responsibility very early on. I can understand how that's also very traumatizing for her because at the point that I met her, she was 16 years old and they were already living off of her income. But you can also imagine the type of power dynamic that that creates in a household 
where your 16 year old child who is very much a normal 16 year old girl and who has outbursts and irritable moments and you would normally try to check your child or like manage your child, parent your child and they couldn't do it because she was the one bringing in the money. How do you ground someone who's paying your phone bill? The line between teenager and adult was very, very blurry. Though Acacia was active on social media from a young age, she wasn't the only family member who was active on social media. Richard Clark has been actively creepy on Instagram with very obviously underage teen girls. Her dad told me to go get F. He told me to bag my face and that I was an ugly sk he liked four of my pics and then called me pretty. I was scared. I'm 12 and he called me a cutie and he liked my freckles. Richard has even had some strange interactions with his own daughter. There was this very strange video in which Richard Clark filmed Acacia licking a straw up close. <laughs> immediate creepy vibes. Already, there was a dark and sinister feeling behind Richard Clark, and then terrible allegations came out. Richard Clark was accused of pressuring underage girls into taking photos. One of the first women to come forward is Brittany, Peyton Clark's former girlfriend. It has always felt like it was my responsibility to be vocal. Peyton Clark was a actor who ended up appearing on the Disney Channel. Was he on the Disney Channel at the time that you guys were dating? When I started dating Peyton, he had been cast for the show, but he wasn't yet starting on it. So like the contract was signed, he was going to start filming in like six months or something like that, I believe. So during my time with him, he was cast for the show, he hadn't started yet, and then he started while we were dating. What was that experience like? Very, very different from what I was used to. I was raised in Kentucky, so I was pretty much just immediately thrown into like the LA scene. I knew nothing about it. When did the majority of your interactions with the Clark family take place? The majority would be during 2013 and 2014 with like sporadic times after that. Me and Peyton would kind of just randomly get in contact again for every couple of years up until like 2019, which was my last interaction with any of them. He introduced me to his family on the first date and his dad immediately invited me with him and his son on a road trip. In my relationship with Peyton, Peyton, Rich was immediately involved. My first date was at Peyton's house and I remember watching a movie on their couch and Rich sat down and was just very complimentary of me. He would tell Peyton, oh my God, I can't believe that you met someone like her on a dating app. Then during that interaction, he was like, me and Peyton are actually going to Utah in a couple days. Would you like to come? And I turned to Peyton and I was like, would you like me to come? I don't know. Brittany described more in depth the road trip she took with Peyton and Rich, during which Richard asked Brittany if she would be comfortable posing nude for him. I go with him and Peyton to Utah. We have this road trip. On the road trip, Rich asks me if I'd like to shoot with him. We do like a couple-y shoot with me and Peyton. I actually do think that our first kiss was on camera, which was interesting. Rich asked me to shoot nude and he was showing me examples of what he wants to do. And I turned to Peyton, I said, is that normal? Is this okay? Again, I'm from Kentucky. I don't know what's normal here. I'm looking at the person I'm dating and I'm like, is this weird? And he's saying, no. Unfortunately, at this point in the timeline, I didn't know that it was also normalized for Peyton that Rich would use his girlfriends as his own personal harem. So me getting this approval from Peyton absolutely never worked in my favor because he was, similarly to be this certain way by Rich. As she and Peyton continued dating, Brittany said she was constantly at the Clark's family home and welcomed by his family. When it comes to me and Peyton's relationship, I don't think that there was anything special about it. I don't think that we would have lasted as long as we did if I hadn't been literally immediately enmeshed in the family. 
Me, Peyton, and Acacia were like a unit. We were together all the time. We were best friends with each other. Melissa was like a mother to me. She would drive me to work every day and Rich would use me to manage Acacia. If Acacia had a brand deal, I was to go sit with her and make sure that she did it. And I would also walk Malaya home from school. I would babysit her and Keegan. Like I was just so immediately involved with every part of the family that me and Peyton's relationship 100% took a backseat. There was a large period of time where we weren't dating and I was still living in the home. It's almost like you care so much about the family itself and, and how they're doing. I had so much love for that family. As someone who doesn't come from a close-knit family in any way, shape, or form, that was very appealing to me. I like suddenly had a mother figure and a father figure and siblings that cared about each other. And that was all super new to me. When you come from a house on fire and you walk into a house on fire, you don't really notice a difference. It's kind of like the whole family was love bombing me. They were my only friends and my only family. But Richard Clark continued to prey on her, sending her a number of explicit texts. Brittany shared screenshots from Richard Clark where he says that in order to ease her stress, she should have endless with an older man. And the most disturbing text message that Richard sent Brittany yet was when he asked her to be his mistress. That first time when we were on the trip together and we were shooting, I would say that Rich behaved himself to the best of his abilities, the most that he ever has. And every time after that, that I would shoot with him, it was very much like, don't bring Peyton along. And these times, were wildly inappropriate. He would talk about how aroused he was while he was shooting me. He would physically adjust himself and it just kept escalating like that. I was able to deflect pretty well. I shouldn't have had to, but I was able to deflect pretty well. And it got to this kind of pinnacle where Rich texted me and he flat out asked when you and Peyton are done. Our relationship was never that deep. And I think Rich sensed that. He was like, when you and Peyton are done, would you like to be my mistress? And I was like, okay. And I remember me and Peyton going to his room and I pulled him into like the closet. We're just sitting in the closet in the dark. And I showed him the text messages and I was like, where do we go from here? What do we do? And Peyton's verbatim response was, is that going to be a problem for you? And I was like, I don't want to make it a problem, so I guess not. I guess I will continue to handle it like I've been handling it. So yeah, Peyton's response was incredibly passive, and I think that it's because this was not the first time that it had happened. I've now connected with another one of Rich's victims, who was also Peyton's ex-girlfriend. She was 14 when she had her interactions with them. Rich would pretend to be Peyton, online, like he would log into Peyton's accounts. Peyton would go to school the next day and talk to his girlfriend and she'd be like, this was weird. And he was like, that wasn't me. That's not me. And that situation escalated to the point where Rich was emailing her as himself. Super creepy stuff. And it did escalate to the point that the girl's parents found out and they notified Melissa. I guess there was like a sit down situation where this was starting to escalate to the police. And very conveniently, the entire Clark family moved out of state shortly after. And I noticed a pattern with them where even in the short period that I knew them, they moved three times. So it does seem like moving was a reaction for them, like a defense mechanism and a way to stay away from legal action. Wow. Yeah. Allegedly, in my opinion. In your opinion, allegedly. Peyton and Brittany broke up in 2014 and Brittany told the rest of the Clark family about the messages. Because I was going on all these shoots with Rich, either as a model or as his assistant, I was getting a lot of information from the back end when it was just he and I speaking to each other. And this is when the really inappropriate comments about the minors that he was working with started to progress, whether it was in person and some over text, the text that I've shared, he was absolutely sexualizing these children. And that's what really shifted everything for me. It became not about me. And when it was about children was when I couldn't just sit there anymore. He was working with models like Larson Thompson when she was 12 and he would make comments like, oh, I think she wants me kind of thing. I think she's attracted to me. He was sent by a 14 year old girl that he was working with. And I was like, oh my God, are you going to notify her parents? Cause that's wild. And he said, no, I think I'm gonna mentor her. I think she needs a lot of help. So it was just so clear that he was preying on children 
And at that point, I came to Acacia, actually, and I gave her all of what I had as far as what was recorded screenshots. She took it to Melissa and shared everything. I will say in hindsight, I don't think that it was his predatory behavior that had them all so triggered. I think it was his cheating. Melissa Clark was justifiably horrified and kicked Richard Clark out of the house, and the two divorced later that year. Brittany says she was completely isolated from the family, saying it was obvious that they didn't want their family name tarnished if Richard Clark's behavior was exposed to the public. Public. There was a period of time where Rich was kicked out and the divorce was getting started and I was still in the family. Rich is still working with children at this point. Handling it privately was going absolutely nowhere. Rich would use his status of I made my kids so famous. Peyton is on Disney at this point. He's filming. Acacia is at like the peak of her popularity. The parents that I contacted did not care because their primary focus was also making their child famous. So the only way that I could really get ahead of this was to post about it publicly and to post the screenshots and be like, this man is dangerous. This man is a predator. Do not work with him. And immediately the tone in the house shifted with me because it was, if you care about Malaya, you won't publicize this thing about her father. It was like their reputation was so much more important than the safety of children. Again, it, I think it was the infidelity that really triggered all of them. And once they got over that and they had removed me from the unit. He was just kind of accepted back in, not as Melissa's husband, but as still part of the family. The Clark family, a family obsessed with image. I didn't hear from any of them ever again until 2019 when me and Peyton were on our last attempt to have a friendship. And I went to Disneyland with Jairus and Acacia and Peyton. I later learned that that was mostly because Acacia was supporting Peyton and trying to get back with me, which was weird because I was in a relationship and have a child. And yeah, I was like, Peyton, you want to be a stepdaddy? I don't think so. So I think I saw your TikTok where you said he, he just wanted to have sex with you two to three times. three times. And then he drops this beautiful line that I will never forget. He says, I just thought that like when you eventually break up with your boyfriend, we could have sex like two to three times. <laughs> so specific. So strange. <laughs> Unfortunately, the allegations of harm and women coming forward does not stop with Brittany. There are even more brave women who have come forward. At the time, I didn't have a direct contact with the FBI and I didn't know how to contact them. That changed in 2019, or maybe it was 2020, when I met Irene and Irene was going through a legal situation with that already. And she did have a direct line to the FBI. So I have literally sat with the FBI in my backyard drinking kombucha together and like gone over the situation. And the man is still not behind bars. So like our system is broken. It is so hard to actually get these men charged even when there is a mountain of evidence. Irene Kaya posted a video onto YouTube. After Irene's father died, she moved to Los Angeles and joined an acting agency. In 2015, my dad passed away and it was very traumatic for me. I dropped everything and I moved to LA. Richard began taking her photos to help with her budding career at the time. So I found Rich Clark and I started working with him. Irene began to grow close to Richard Clark and told him about her father. And Irene claims that Richard Clark used this very sensitive information against her to manipulate her. He told me he would be my surrogate father. The more we shot, the more he would ask for more unprofessional poses and poses. And I remember whenever I would question him, he would manipulate me, but I didn't realize that at the time. He would say to trust him, to trust your surrogate father. Irene said that a phrase that Richard used to try and coerce her into taking more and more explicit photos was that he was a s**tool, which Brittany also said he had told her at the time. Whenever we would shoot, he would tell me, I'm a s**tool, but you are lost me. You made me excited. After Richard pushed Irene to do implied new he pushed her to do full nudity, and Irene was only 16 years old at the time, which is illegal. Doing implied nudity, um, he resorted to full on nudes of a 16 year old. And I remember asking him one time why we needed to do nude, and he got very defensive and then said that his son is a Disney star, his daughter is a YouTube star, 
So he knows how to meet children's stars. He knows what to do. So just listen to him and don't question him. Irene says she has documentation that her photos were being sold online for as little as $2.58. Well, I was in high school at the time and I realized he had posted my news on Instagram as a minor. A lot of people from my class got a hold of those news. He would post the photos of the nude minors that he took and after we would like it and view it, he would go back and change the caption and put a link on it instead. Saw that he was selling my and many other underage girls nude online for $5 each basically. Like a scam artist and all in one. Irene went to the police because this is illegal and the police launched an investigation. I went back to the police station and cried my eyes out. This investigation culminated into the police going to Clark's house and asking him if he knew Irene. What do you think he said? No, I don't know her. I didn't understand why they wouldn't help me. The evidence was right there. We had an army of girls with evidence, rock hard evidence, and you just chose to side with a one word answer. No. I absolutely hate using this word. Yes, I was friend. How? absolutely devastating and frustrating that must have been for Irene. I can't even imagine. I think he knew very immediately who he was able to prey on and manipulate and who he was not. Looking at my experience, looking at Irene Kaya's experience, who is a model who worked with him underage, and they are currently involved in a lawsuit. She was in a very precarious spot in her family. I moved out of my house at like 17. Rich was so good at spotting when a person did not have family to rely on. But even even after all of this, all of these claims, all of these women and young girls coming forward, Acacia had her dad in her wedding photos. When you look at the amount of young girls that he had harmed, who were trying to tell the family this information, the police, and instead of doing anything about it, the family cut them off to protect their own reputation and posed with the abuse at a wedding. That has to be so extremely upsetting for the victims. Acacia even allegedly named her son's middle name after her father's middle name, and he bragged about it on social media. Me and Acacia had like a recent public thing. I don't know what to call it. This was when she had publicly been hanging out with Tyler Carter, who is well known for having a young boy. Tyler Carter is a grown man that has previously been accused of being inappropriate with children and minors. One being a 15 year old child who claimed Tyler and SA'd them. And she pretty much immediately was defending that, saying that she isn't going to scrutinize him, he can change, blah, blah, blah. And it's just another example of her defending a predator. In her comments, people were like, and you also still are active with your father and your brother. She pretty much commented back and was like, Brittany's a liar. You can't trust what she said. And I pretty much at that point publicly had to be like, hey, I do not support this girl. I don't think that she's improved really. And obviously her protecting and group and predators is just part of her. Peyton Clark, the oldest child in the Clark family, doesn't seem entirely innocent. By the end of me living in that house, Peyton was actively pursuing his castmate, Piper Perda. He would tell me about how he had sent her flowers. He was spending all of his time in her room on set. We were not together in any sense of the word at that point. There's an interview on YouTube on the set of I Didn't Do It with Peyton where Piper like comes into the interview and they're just hanging all over each other. I don't love the age gap in between that. I didn't love it then. I love it even less now, but she was 16, he was like 20. With Peyton having a budding acting career, appearing on the Disney Channel in a starring role, and making a lot of money from it, he also had a lot to lose if his family's dark secrets came to light, his career coming crashing down with it. According to All Famous Birthday, which I don't know how reliable of a source this is, Peyton's net worth for starring in the Disney Channel series I Didn't Do It is over $5 million. When Peyton was a full-grown adult, he completely dismissed his own girlfriend's worries about his father being a predator. The only way 
sects can continue to operate is when people around them are willing to protect them. And it looked like Richard had created a system where his own children acted like his protectors, shielding his behavior from the public, all so that they could protect their own career and their own reputations. And Peyton very clearly continued to ignore his father's actions. He went to advertise his father's headshot services, even when it was known information to him that his father used his photography services to prey on young girls. So, well, maybe Peyton is not the greatest. While I can to a certain extent empathize with all the children who grew up in that horrible environment to condone pet or at least actively try and hide it well into your adulthood isn't great. And there's reason to believe that Peyton may have continued some of this behavior as well. Like there's so much chaos in their wake. They leave everyone worse than how they found them. It's just so tough to watch that continue to happen. Yeah, with now younger children. Once Acacia's Tumblr and internet fame took off, Yes, I did. Somebody please tell me what the F I is. I am making a nice mac boots up. That boots up is turkey boots up. Why did I just do that? At least, according to Acacia, she started to pay her family's bills at a young age. having to grow up really quickly. According to former friends of Acacia's, her parents were not great people and were financially abusing her. As for her mother, one of Acacia's former acquaintances posted a video explaining that her mother was 100% fine with Acacia being b****ed by older men. Acacia was dating 20, 21 year old, 22 year olds the entire time that I knew her. I don't think I've ever told the story. Acacia got like hyper fixated on this man named TC Carter from a like mall band called After Romeo. Acacia was so fixated on him, even though he had a girlfriend, that Melissa, me, and Acacia got in a car and took a cross country road trip to go see him. And this kid is like 20 and Acacia's 16. Melissa completely allowed these types of relationships to happen. Acacia opened up about having CPTSD, which is common in people who grow up in an abusive household. She's also stated that she was the emotional caretaker for her family long before she began paying the bills. So it's safe to say Acacia did not have the greatest of childhoods. The victim within Acacia emerges. One of the earliest internet influencers, possibly exploited not only online and by various men she dated, but by her own creepy family who took advantage of her online stardom to pay their bills and take care of themselves instead of her own well-being and mental health. The reason I turned to the internet and YouTube and all the other social medias is because I didn't really fit in. Sixth to seventh grade is when I made my first Tumblr account. Did you have any feelings about the way that the family as a whole viewed fame with Acacia being so internet famous at a young age and with Peyton now getting into acting and landing that role on the Disney Channel? It was absolutely something that the entire family valued. And I think that it was something that Rich and Melissa pushed for. I think they considered themselves the two kids' managers, Peyton and Acacia's managers. I think for Melissa, it was the status of the fame that she valued. And I think for Rich, it was his ability to get access to new clients for his photography business and also his way to access new victims. He was very vocal about, I made my two kids famous. I can make your kids famous. And that was a huge selling point of his. Acacia was not protected by her own family. She was a child who was neglected. Sound familiar? It seems from the evidence presented, that was all she ever knew. After spending time around Acacia, what's your opinion about child influencers? Since Acacia is one of the very first child influencers. I mean, I think it's making children sick. Someone who gets addicted to this feedback loop, whether it's positive or negative, but if they have that attention, period. I don't think they care whether it's positive or negative. Being on the internet so young and it making them, you know, blow up the way that it does, I just think is inherently toxic. And I think that it makes them sick. And I think that you can't heal 
in the environment that made you sick. Acacia herself has claimed a few different mental health diagnoses, which logically would make sense with the traumatic and unconventional childhood that she's had. I think it's important to address while simultaneously stating, I'm not a mental health professional and can't really confirm or deny whether or not Acacia has these diagnoses. And of course, mental health has a profound impact on how you relate with others. But simultaneously, while it may explain your actions, mental health should never fully excuse your actions, especially when your actions become heinous and inflict serious harm onto others. When Acacia was 17 years old, she was in the midst of her punk phase, with dark hair and grungy clothes, attending concerts frequently, and posting lots of selfies with a smoky eye. She was going to the warp Tour when she happened to meet J. Roos Kersey, who was in a band called Alive Like Me and was 24 years old. Acacia was only 17, but nevertheless, the two began dating. Um, 25. 25. She was 18 and he was 25 here. Jesus Christ, how was he not ashamed? Almost immediately, when Acacia and J. Roos began dating, they began taking some, well, really inappropriate Tumblr style pictures together. The thing is, for some of these photos, Acacia was allegedly 17, then barely 18, and J. Roos was 24. 25 at the time. These photos date back to July of 2015 when Acacia was 17. Yikes. That's... There's also some shady allegations about J. Roos, most coming from the former woman he dated and some anonymous accounts online that claim that J. Roos has a pattern of cheating and treating women horribly. J. Roos just sounds like a ball of sunshine. My analysis of Acacia. Acacia cannot exist without male validation and internet attention. She most likely fought for validation from her parents and gaining that attention online felt like real love. Then she met J. Roos, who was older, her type, and into her. That was enough for her to think she could settle down with. You kind of watched Acacia grow up on the internet. Probably not that closely. You were focused on your own family and everything. She continued to be an influencer, became a mother with millions of viewers online. All the while, you knew the dark truth of her family behind the scenes. How have you felt watching her story unfold online? I have and continue to have so much empathy for Acacia. I think it's so different when you know someone's villain origin story and you know it very intimately. I feel bad for this little girl who grew up under a microscope. I feel bad for the girl who didn't get a proper education. Her mom literally purchased her diploma so that she could continue to just be an influencer at home. I feel bad for the girl that had managers instead of parents and was allowed to be preyed on by these older men. I will always feel terrible for her. And it's only in the last two years that my perspective has shifted and that's obviously with new information. Acacia found someone who she thought would be able to fix her and thought that possibly starting a family would be able to fix the broken childhood she never had. I honestly can't wait to have kids. Oh dear Jesus, God no. Peyton, shut up. My kids would be so funny and cool and cute and beat your kids up. They're kids, Acacia, not Pokemon. Acacia was pregnant at 18 and had her first daughter, Brinley, at the age of 19. J. Roos was 25 at the time. So then it was bye-bye soft grunge and hello new crunchy granola mom aesthetic. She became the perfect brand for the insta mom lifestyle where you can post pictures with your children looking happy and perfect and also place lots of ads because let's face it advertisers wanted the granola family look. Because of Acacia's online presence from a young age, Acacia understood the power of image. What if I told you that there's a very real possibility that Acacia's very image is ripped off from other people? People, maybe even her former friends. According to the Acacia Kersey Snark subreddit, Acacia had a fellow influencer friend named Amber Fillerup from the years 2016 to 2018, the exact years Acacia was going through her rebrand, which aligns with photo evidence of the two of them seen together during these times. And it seemed Amber became a huge style inspiration for Acacia. But here's where things start to get a little weird, because the inspiration that Acacia derived off of Amber's Instagram becomes, well, in my opinion, 
a little bit too similar, but you can judge that for yourself. Here's Acacia and Amber with the same mama bird t-shirt. Here's Acacia and Amber in what looks like the same Airbnb and the exact same pose. Here's Acacia in the exact same Christmas PJ set that Amber has with her family. Here's Acacia wearing the exact same hairstyle that Amber is wearing. Here's Acacia doing the exact same pose in a similar flower garden setting. And Acacia even named her daughter the same name that Amber named her daughter, the name Rosie. Of course, some of these are very basic Instagrammer things to do, but doing all of these starts to get a little weird. Naming your child the same name as your friend just named their daughter is like a cardinal sin. And then after she rebranded into this new family vlogger image, she began to film her children constantly, exploiting them in advertisements and sponsorships, creating a family YouTube channel and promoting them on her Instagram, profiting off of her children, doing what her family did to her, to her children. Is she repeating the cycle that her family kind of put onto her? You kind of can't deny that she's repeating the cycle. I've known Acacia since she was very young. At 16, she wanted to have four kids just like her mom did. And then she had her first baby at 18. She had these childish reasons for wanting to be a mother, for wanting to have a family that she was immediately able to enact by the fact that she was dating someone who was in his mid twenties. I think you can't deny that these cycles have repeated simply because she was just so young and immature. And when did she have the time to internalize what had happened to her and examine why she wanted kids and why she wanted a family? In this video, we discussed the dark, horrific truth behind Acacia Kersey's family. As Brittany Christine put it, Acacia Kersey's villain origin story. Next week, Week, we're talking about how Acacia became the villain inside the victim, how she repeated the cycle that her family inflicted onto her and both exploited and neglected her own children, all escalating with her abandoning her own children in a park. But this story has an even darker turn of events, with it being domestic violence Awareness Month, we have to talk about the sad reality in which Acacia came forward about her story of domestic abuse and how that plays into all of this also and puts her children in even more danger. It's money and it's attention. I think those are her two primary focuses. Thank you to Copilot for sponsoring this video and click the link in the description to get a 14-day free trial with your own personal trainer.